Hello and welcome to the Old Realms. Yes, indeed. This is one of the first total conversions for Mountain Blade to Bannerlord. And if you'd like to check out the mod, there is a link in the description. Also, my mod load order is uh, down below as well. You can check that out with all the relevant links too. I'm extremely excited about this. I love Warhammer Fantasy, Warhammer in general. And I'm really pleased to see that this mod's development is swimming along very nicely, ste slow and steady, you know? And that's, that's all it needs to be, really. That's all it needs to be, because I have heard extremely good things about this, as it feels like a completely professional experience. It feels like this is made by an actual development studio, which is amazing, because... This is a, a bunch of really passionate people that are part of the modding community. And this is what I'm talking about whenever I say anything about the modding community. They always come through with these amazing creations. And this is definitely one of them. So you have only two cultures to choose from right now. But as far as I'm aware, there are a couple more factions that you can interact with and so on and so forth. But anyway, here we are. We have the Empire of Men, and we have the Vampire Counts. Personally, uh, for interest's sake, I am much more likely to choose the Vampire Counts. I think they look really, really cool. I love this artwork, by the way. I don't know where they, where they got this from, whether they created this or whatever, but it looks really cool. And I am going to be playing the Vampire Counts. Why not? And uh, now we, well, now we get to play a scrawny guy <laughs> ah this this looks good okay there we are fantastic all right here we go choose your family's background okay so we now have the ability to choose all of these warhammer related things i'm actually not entirely sure i don't even know what i want to play that is how much i've thought about my character build because all i've thought about is warhammer 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 fantasy thank you thank you thank you thank you that is it <laughs> that's all i've thought okay Family's background, throwing, athletics, roguery. I like throwing. Roguery could be fun. Let's do grave robbers. Why not? That's that's a little bit funny, isn't it? All right. Uh, let, should we do a roguery build? Oh, roguery is going to be so incredibly... I don't even know. That's it's kind of... It's the thing. It's not a useless skill, but I definitely say it's one of the least useful, at least early on. So I'm not sure if that's going to be something that I'm... You know what? I'm still going to do it. I'm literally just going to do it because I, th I find it amusing. Okay, so wait a minute, wait a minute. They, okay, so obviously this is alpha, by the way. Like super alpha, really. You can download it yourself, by the way, if you want to play it. But um, yeah, still very much in development. So obviously some things are going to be a little bugged and here and there and all that wonderful stuff. So I'm thinking we're going to be a novice necromancer should we be a novice necromancer that sounds pretty fun it does give me another point in roguery as well which is hilarious yeah uh, i'm thinking yes or i could do a vagabond vagabond gives me more throwing skill yep we'll do vagabond that gives me more throwing skill we're gonna play on bannerlord preset i think i'm gonna play on uh, reduced difficulty because i want to be in the thick of battle much more often and i can assume that many of the enemy units probably are very proficient at what they do and we're going to do um auto allocation of clan member perks apparently death is not a thing can i i mean it, oh birth and death okay so the birth and death system had to be disabled for the mod by the looks of things okay that's interesting now let's uh Let's see what I can pick here. I have no idea. Should I, hmm. Okay, you know what? Should we just go for a classic? Let's go for a classic, right? There we go. The bear. And uh, we'll swap around these colors. Okay, apparently they're the same color. <laughs> oh, I literally picked basically the same color. That is hilarious. Of course, that would be me, wouldn't it? All right, let's go for something like this, I guess. All right. Player land. No, we will not call ourselves player land. We will call ourselves bear tilt. There we go. I did say we we're going to go for a classic, and uh, we're going to go for Barney. Why not? That's uh, my that's my fallback. You know, that's my safe option. All right, let's do it. All right. So welcome to the old realms, and we have now appeared 
right next to Castle Drakenhof, and we are right there. Okay, so let's actually just take a quick look at how large the map is. Is it is it is actually very large. It's just that it hasn't had any additional factions added so far. I mean, you can see here that we have. Uh, can I actually mouse over this? Uh, I'm so bad at mousing over. Okay, there we go. So we have the Empire of Man, of course, and we have the Vampire Counts, and then we have Halflings. We do have a Halfling uh, Halfling clan right there. And I assume we're going to be seeing some other stuff as well. But I, yep, there we go. We have Traitor's Blood as a clan, Men of Moor, and so on and so forth. Okay, that's actually really, really cool. So let's uh, let's very quickly run in here. Oh, we actually get the ability to recruit people instantly. I love that. Okay, that's super nice. Usually when you first start in Bannerlord, you really don't get the opportunity to recruit people because many of the villagers have already had people, you know, turn up and try to uh, try to recruit, you know, uh, units from from these villages. And it's actually super nice that that is not the case this time around. I maybe I just got lucky, you know, maybe I just got lucky. That might be it. But anyway, I'm just going to auto resolve this particular battle and then we'll move on. And it looks as though we've gained a huge amount of charm skill for just speaking to this guy. But look at the models, okay? This was the main reason why I wanted to actually create a video on this, because obviously this is very much a work in progress. Probably not going to be something that I can create a full series on, unless we just want a one versus one situation against the Vampire Counts and the Empire of Man, which might actually be kind of cool. I do need to take a look at the troop trees, though, because obviously troop trees you know, need to be all filled out and all that wonderful stuff. You've also got to bear in mind that I have not gone through the, um, I haven't gone through the shader preload sequence. So any single time I go into an interactive scene or environment, the game is going to have a slightly longer load time as a result of that. And that is just because I didn't go through that, um, that shader preload. If you go through the shader preload, it can take, according to the game, it can take 20 to 70 minutes to be done with that, uh, with that preloading, dependent on your system. And I would highly recommend running through that before you actually start the game. I didn't do that because I don't have the time to do that, but I will be doing that if there's a full series being made on this or anything like that. I would like to get into this village to be uh, to possibly be able to recruit some some people. So we'll see if that happens. All right. So uh, yeah, it turned out the it was probably a good idea for me to go through the shader compiling because it now mean oh, okay, it kind of now makes the, all the loading screens go by just that much faster. And this is actually one of the battle scenes that they put you into when the shading is done compiling. So basically what that means is whenever you're running around in the game and you go into a village or you go into a battle or you go somewhere, you don't actually have to worry about loading those textures any further. You can basically make it so that they just immediately get loaded by the game as fast as your system can handle it and you don't have to load them all again. So that was the main reason why I wanted to do that. And as you could no doubt tell, I don't know whether you saw that, but... There's magic in this mod as well. Oh yes. So obviously this is not my army. This is literally just some random army. And there you go. We're now back on the main screen. And I will be able to go back into the game and uh, resume play. Alright, so yeah, before when I was taking a look at the troop trees, I obviously didn't show you that, but uh, yeah, there was a good reason for that because these little portraits right here, they were not loading because again, my shaders hadn't been compiled. So I'd highly recommend going ahead and doing that. It took me about mm, 25 minutes. Yeah, it took me about 25 minutes for my shaders to compile might be shorter, might be longer for you, dependent on your system. So do bear that in mind, but it is highly recommended to do it. At least I think it's good.
to do it. Anyway, let's take a look at some of the noble troop lines. Obviously, these are noble units right here. These are not regular units, because, of course, if you know anything about the vampires, for example, from Blood Bowl, because that's actually where most of my knowledge comes from when it comes to Warhammer Fantasy, I know that might be <laughs> that might be a bit blasphemous, potentially, because Blood Bowl is obviously a bit of a spin-off game that is set in the Warhammer Fantasy universe. But generally, I haven't had a lot of experience with it otherwise, with the exception of Warsword Conquest, of course. Anyway, let's take a look at some of their stats. So you can see here that we have a... What, what, what is that? A skeletal horse! That is so cool! And she looks really cool too, by the way. I don't know whether you've noticed, but the models in this mod are so incredibly highly detailed that I absolutely adore them. And you can see the horse there as well in the background. The cloth physics are working so nicely, interacting with the various armor pieces that the, uh, that the units have. And I mean, you can see how detailed this is. And that's exactly the reason why a bunch of people are saying that this is the work of a professional team, not just modders that are hobbyists in their spare time, but you can clearly tell the passion that they have for this game. It's absolutely amazing. And you can see here, there's another one of those. There's a vampire, there's a blood knight. Look at how cool he is. And then you have a Templar, and then you have the last guy, who is uh, admittedly a tier 8 unit, but you can see that their stats are not actually that powerful, which, in my opinion, is a perfect decision to make. It is an absolutely perfect decision to make because on the one hand, of course, you would like to have your units be rather strong, but anything stronger than this, and I think maybe dependent on what kind of gear it's using. I mean, you can see here it's using a vampire shield, vampire great axe potentially, and then it's using blood knight armor. You can see how powerful this is as well. Look at that. 50 to body armor, 20 to arm armor, 22 to leg armor, tier 6 armor. Really, really harsh. And you can obviously tell that, you know, the stats are going to reflect that. Now, on the other hand, you have the Sylvanian recruits here, which are your normal troop tree. And this is basically all you get out of them. Yeah, these, this is it. This is it. <laughs> they just go from recruits into regular troops. And that is all. So I'm actually wondering whether I can get anything more than that, because I'm actually wondering whether I can get something that aren't Sylvanians or maybe something else. Not entirely sure. Ooh, delivering the herd. Okay, do I have to actually visit him? I can't speak to him outside. I guess they want me to go into the village itself, which is perfectly fine. Oh, no, no, never mind, never mind. Okay, yeah, I mean, what's really cool about this as well is that I actually get to take a look at the scene too, because I think that the way that these developers are doing this mod is really smart, because as far as I am aware, if I take a look around here, this doesn't seem to resemble native or the native villages at all. And you can see here that there's a bunch of vampires around here too. Look at this guy. Look at this guy in the background. Yeah, that's really, really cool. Anyway, uh, yeah, this guy's obviously got a task for me. So I'm going to say 10 summers. Oh, okay, 10 to horses. Yeah, sure. I will deliver those for you, sir. Yes, indeed. All right, so I can't uh, can't recruit anyone more from here, but we need to go to Voldenhof. So that is exactly where we're going to head to. I would like to fight a couple of Empire Outlaws, if at all possible. So we're going to see what happens there. And what is this? Aha! Look at that. Okay, so Regiments of Renown Recruitment. Now, I'm going to assume that you can probably get some pretty strong units from here, because... Obviously, if they're taking a... I think they might be taking a leaf out of Warsword Conquest's book or a bunch of the other mods, maybe, from Warband. Because in that, you had to go to towns and maybe castles to a lesser extent. I actually can't remember now. But towns, for sure, to be able to recruit a bunch of much more powerful units. They were much more expensive as well, of course. But, you know, that is to be expected. Anyway, I'm not going to sell these horses right now because as we know, um, yeah, selling horses with the herd quest actually doesn't work anymore because even if you sell five of them, you have to have all of them in your possession to be able to complete the quest. 
So, yeah, there's that. Anyway, we also have Winds of Magic here. So, obviously, there is magic in the game. You also have artillery here, too. I'm actually wondering where magic is. Can I buy magic? Or do I need to do something else with it? There's a Vampiric Scythe. Okay, that looks very cool indeed. Doesn't seem like there's anything else here, unfortunately. But, yeah, that's, that's still very, very nice to see. And, uh, yeah, okay. No, no, no tournament going on. Nope, no tournament going on. Okay, I'm going to make my way over here. We will try to fight a couple of Empire Outlaws if we can. Let's get this. Um, let's have a look. Uh, I'm going to go for no rest for the wicked because I might do a little bit of raiding against one of the human villages potentially. I'm not entirely sure about that just yet. And what am I currently using? I need to check my gear for a real quick second. Okay, so I'm actually using a bow and a one-handed axe. Okay, that, um, yeah, I guess I'll just go for one-handed, and I'll go for Vigor. I am starting with some really, really low skills right here. I'm going to go for another little bit in one-handed there. Should probably have put that in Athletics. Ah, hello! Hello, Chaos Cultists. All right, fight me if you dare, sir. Okay, I actually have no idea what kind of stats these guys have. Okay, so they've got decent stats. They have 60 in almost everything. So let me actually just very quickly have a look. Okay, I have 40. Right. Okay, I have 40. I don't have a horse. If I put one of these on, then I will have a horse, but I won't have a saddle. Do I need a saddle to be actually to actually be able to make this work? Uh, you know, I'm not going to I'm not going to chance it, all right? I'm not going to chance it because I don't want to go in there and then literally you know, uh not be able to move or, you know, have my horse not listen to me or anything like that. It's just going to be an absolute mess. So I'm going to just try this the old fashioned way. And I'm going to hope that the enemy doesn't have any shields. I don't think they do. So that's that's fantastic. That means everything to me right now that they don't have any shields. Nice. Okay, wait, wait. No, 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 no. Okay, there we go. Oh, no. Run! Ah, they're very fast, aren't they? Okay, yeah, that's really bad. Uh, I've got an axe. Let's see if I can do use it appropriately enough. Yes. Yes. Victory has been achieved. Take that, cultists. Okay, wow, they were actually a lot more... <laughs> they were a lot more damaging than I anticipated, but we were able to win that with zero casualties? Did they do any damage to me whatsoever? I mean, they were killing me. I'm really surprised that they didn't kill any of my forces, to be honest. Seems like my, my, uh, my units were a lot more powerful than I anticipated, but there you go. All right. Um, yeah, now we have the ability to level these guys up, so I guess we're going to go, considering my vampires are mostly, um, what do these, what do these have again? Oh yeah, they are, uh, they're skirmishers, they're mounted skirmishers, so we're going to go for the heavy cavalry option, control shift, ah, wait a minute, cancel my changes, yes please, yes please, okay. Yeah, so control shift, do that, there we go, set the upgrade target, and we're going to make these guys be archers, because I think, I don't know, I think it's good to have a cavalry unit, and then that cavalry unit is going to be distracting many of the uh, many of the enemies, hopefully, and then your archers are going to be able to, you know, shoot, and hopefully not be assaulted in the process. Ah, very nice, look at that, we already have a cape, very good, okay. And there's a rusty falchion as well. Actually wondering whether I should replace this. The axe seemed to do pretty decent damage, admittedly. So I'm thinking maybe I'll just keep it around for now. And we'll just move on. Ooh, okay. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a bit worried, to be honest. I'm a bit worried. Okay, yeah. So let's just continue to... Oh, I don't have enough money. Oh, of course I don't. Okay, I'm going to have to go and complete this quest. Hopefully that's going to be enough for me to be able to continue surviving. You can see here we have some more Chaos Cultists. Oh, please don't attack me. Okay. Got to have to be a little bit careful of them. Because while I would be able to tackle a group of 12, pretty easily in fact, because we were able to, you know, eliminate a much larger band, 
I do need to be a bit careful because I am very low in HP myself. So there's also that. Anyway, let me see what I can do here. Hopefully this particular person is going to... You look very young. Yes. You look... Uh, how, how young are you in actual fact? You're 14. Oh my. Okay, well... Uh, good on you, I guess. Good on you for surviving and um, doing a good job, I guess, maybe being a gang leader. Anyway, uh, let's have a look here about the task. 10 Sumter Horses. I brought 10 Sumter Horses as we agreed. 825 gold. Not too bad if I do say so myself. I would like to do a tournament, but I don't think a tournament is currently available. I could go into the arena. Hmm. Actually, I would like to check and walk around the city itself because i uh, i don't know I, i'm not sure whether they've done the scenes inside in the interiors and things like that and it looks as though they have not i don't think they do look very cool admittedly but i don't think that they have done this one at the very least maybe they've done a couple of others you can see here however that they have done a couple of things like adding npcs for example this guy hello there and uh, yeah, so that's actually really nice. But of course, the main, the main attraction here is all of the units that you're going to be using and fighting with and so on and so forth. So I am very much hoping that we will be able to continue onward and hopefully see a little bit of that. Obviously, we've already seen that in the, in the form of the Chaos Cultists and things. But I'm wondering, how do we learn magic? That's the thing. How do we learn magic? I actually have no idea. That is the thing. Hmm. Yeah, I suppose you're just going to have to walk around and try and uh, try and figure it out yourself. But for me specifically, I am absolutely loving this already. And this is not even done. This is such a, an early version of the game. It's just amazing, really. It's just amazing to even think that this is even available, to be honest, because you can see how much work has been put into this already and the amount of troops. I mean, I'm actually just going to take a look at the troops again because there are so many different troops available here. I mean, obviously, these guys are not done yet, but you can see how much is going to be available. They are planning on adding all of these. Yeah, I mean, these guys are actually available right now. These guys can actually attack you right, 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 right away. So... You know, you can fight these, they can kill you, and they will not hesitate to do so. But yeah, there are a bunch of other units that you can, of course, encounter. Like these guys, for example. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Hello there. These guys look real cool. Look at that. I love the models. They look so, so good. They really do. And again, they're not overpowered, you know? They're not overpowered. I mean, maybe they are overpowered for, for, for this because mods do, you know, all kinds of different things with scaling and balancing and all that sort of stuff. But I feel like the decision that they've made to basically make it so that your, your most powerful units are not that powerful in... Even uh, even against native units, I'm talking about things like um, oh wow, these guys literally just just wanted to run into me right here. Okay, so I'm actually gonna have to have to bribe them. Run away! Ah, okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Can I actually attack these Empire Outlaws real fast? Yes. Okay, let's get into a battle here. But yeah, as I say, these guys in comparison to native units from the base game. They're not that powerful, but again, as I've said, their equipment really does make them very, very strong. And also you have to consider the other, the other units in the mod itself too. So maybe in comparison to them, these high tier units are really, really good. Okay, I've got to be careful here. Ah, ah, no, no. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be, you know, it wouldn't be literally me looking at a total conversion without me being eliminated, right? Yeah, it wouldn't be that. Anyway, I would highly recommend downloading the old Realms. It is really good. And for so early in development, 
I, I, I would just love to figure out how to actually craft, or should we say cast, um, cast spells. I'm actually wondering if it's here under concepts. I don't think so. I don't think I can see it here. Skills? No, I don't think that's going to work. Yeah, so I'm obviously not sure how to cast spells or anything like that, but I have seen people do it. I have seen people do it. So obviously, yeah, it would be really, really cool. Maybe what we could do, I mean, look at these guys. Wow, there's so many of them, actually. Um, what about this guy? Whoa, okay. This guy is looking, th this guy is looking real cool. Look at his stats as well. Yeah, that is kind of amazing. I really love this. And the fact that they have also written all of the lore as well. I really appreciate that. Even though I'm someone that is very much a layman when it comes to Warhammer Fantasy lore. I really appreciate that. So that is looking real, real nice. And uh, I suppose with that, that's going to be it for this episode. I obviously can't figure out how to, how to use spells or anything like that. But we've taken a look at the troops. I mean, we technically haven't taken a look at the, the Empire troops. Do you want to see the Empire troops? Yeah, the Empire troops are basically these guys. They're, they're very, very normal-esque. And you can see here that quite clearly they are um, a lot less powerful than the Vampire Counts because the way that the Vampire Counts work, obviously, as you know from, from if you've played Blood Bowl, the Vampires themselves are very strong but they're not very numerous. And it's the same thing with uh, with this, I suppose, where, you know, you're mostly going to be using vampire thralls and, and human-based units in, in comparison. And, it's, and uh, it's a bit different with the Empire here. They have units that are very, very similar to each other in terms of their statistics. And I, I actually very much appreciate that too, because then it basically normalizes everything and it makes it more about strategy and it makes it more about what kind of gear, what kind of units you decide to use. So again, strategy, tactics, and so on and so forth. And that's really going to make a big difference overall. But anyway, uh, yeah, that's probably going to be it for this, um, I guess you could call it a special feature. Yes, that is going to be it for the special feature. If you'd like to see more, from the old realms perhaps a series on it maybe a mini series or something along those lines because obviously we don't have a very large map to deal with here but i can imagine that it is going to be expanding outward so dramatically look at how large this map actually is if you look at it in total look at how far it can extend that is pretty amazing and what? It actually goes down as well? Okay, yeah, it goes down into the deserts too. So obviously we're going to be seeing, maybe going to be seeing the Tomb Kings. I'm not sure about that. But anyway, I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.